My name is Nikhil Sanjay. I am from Module 1, Cupertino. And, and I'm going to recite this shloka on Shri Rama. Apadama Pahastaram, Dataram Sarvasam Padam, Loka Biramam Shri Ramam, Buyo Buyo Namam Yaham. Jai Shri Manadayana. Jai Shri Manadayana. I am Supraja Upliyapan, Pregnya Module 1, Kupatino. Today I am going to recite one sloka before, we, before during our travel. J- Jale rakshatu varahas, tale rakshatu vamanaha, atavyam narasimhas cha, sarvada paduke sabaha. Jai Shimanarayana. Jai Shimanarayana. My name is Krishna and I'm going to be talking about Sri Ramanavmi. Sri Ramanavmi is one of the most important festivals. On Sri Ramadavmi, Lord Vishnu was born as Lord Rama. According to the lunar calendar, this festival is celebrated on the ninth day of Chatra month. This day comes during Vasantha Ritu, the spring season. Before Rama's birth, King Dasratha was worried because he didn't have any kids. He had three wives, Kausalya, Sumitra, and Kaikeyi. The king's guru advised Dasratha to perform two fire sacrifices. Both went well, and at the end, a divine angel appeared from the Homakunda and presented the king with Paisam to be given to his queens. After exactly 12 months, Dasaratha was blessed with four boys. Kausalya had a son named Rama, who was to make everyone happy. Rama was an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Kaikeya gave birth to Bharata, who was going to be forced to take the responsibility of the entire kingdom. Bharata was a reincarnation of Garuda. Sumitra gave birth to twin ba- babies, Adisesha and Vishwaksena. Lakshmana meant the wealthiest one because he was going to be at constant service to Lord Rama, and Satyagrana meant the destroyer of enemies. Respecting his stepmother's word, when Rama entered the age of 25, he left for the forest for 14 years. On the 13th year of exile, Sita was abducted by Ravana and was kept hostage in Lanka. Later on in Rama's journey to find Sita, he was helped by monkeys. Hanuman constructed a path of stones on the sea between India and Lanka. Rama named the path Narasetu as a monkey called Nala helped him a lot. When Rama reached Lanka with the monkey force, he killed Ravana and he brought Sita back to Ayodhya. After coming back from the forest, Rama ruled the country for 11,000 years. Everybody loved Rama for his humane concern and moral values. After that, everyone sh- celebrated Sri Ramadavmi for nine days. Jay Shri Thank you so much, Module 1 kids. That was a remarkable performance. 
Now, let's move on to the next module. Here, we have Adya Shijish, Anya Lekkar, Ananya Madhubusi, Anirudha Badrinath, Bhargav Soma, and Viva Gita Krishnan from Module 2, presenting sloka and stories, imparting devotion to mother and father. Manayana, my name is Adya Shijish, and I am in Module 2. Today, I will be reciting Shloka 2 of Gajendra Moksham. Nakra Krante Karindre Mgulitanayane Mula Mule Tikine Naham Naham Najaham Najabavaji Punas Tadrusho Madrushishu Ite Vam Tepta Haste Sapadisurgane Bhava Shunye Samaste Mulam Yat Pradur Asita Jishatu Hagavan Mangalam Sandatam Naha. Now I will explain the meaning. So the elephant king Gajendra was in the tight grip of the crocodile. He called many devatas, friends and sages, but nobody dared to come forward to save him. So he called the originator of the universe. Then immediately Lord Sri Hari came and saved him. So this shloka explains that Lord Sri Hari is the savior of all souls. Jai Shri Manayana, thank you. Manayana, my name is Adya Shidish and I am in model 2. Today I will be telling you the story of Ocean of Mother's Love. Once upon a time, there was a little bird named Titibam. She had built a nest on the ocean shore and she had laid eggs. One day when she was not there, the ocean took her eggs twice. So when she returned, she was very angry and furious. Then she decided to teach the ocean a lesson. So she thought she would... So she... She thought she would dry up the ocean. So what she did was she wet herself, then rolled in the sand, and then dropped itself in the water. This went on for many days. One day, Garuda came. Then he asked the little bird, My friend, what are you doing? Then Titibam told her her story. Then after that, Garuda went to Vaikunta and to requested the Lord to help Titibam. Then the Lord told Varuna, the Lord of the Ocean, to return the eggs. So this story tells that mother's love is flawless and we should always be grateful to her and make her always happy. Yeshamanayana, thank you. My name is Anya and I am from Module 2. Graha Kraste Kajendre Rotati Sarabasam Tarkshim Arushya Dhavan Saiburnan Maria Bhusha Vasanna Parikaro Neka Kambi Rakoshaha Abibrano Ratangam Saramasim Apeyam Shanka Chapo Saketo Hastaihi Komo the Kim Apyavatu Hari Raso Amhasam Samhater Naha The meaning is Let this Lord Shri Hari protect us from the heap of sins holding the discus, the arrow of the sword, a sign as protector with the conch and the bow divine with shield and a dagger, and also mace with all the hands delivering his voice, roaring like a cloud while circling, adorned with silk clothes, jewelry, and coupled with a few garland, garlands, who was running, being seated on Garud of the Eagle Mount, while the elephant king was screaming. Jai Sri Manana. Manana, my name is Ananya. Today I will be telling Shokatran. Pradar Swarami Baba Bhiti Mahariti Shantyai Narayana Garuda Vahanam Anjanabam Graha Vibhuta Mada Varana Mukti Hetum Chakra Idam Taruna Varija Patra Netram Early in the morning, I pray to Lord Sivan Narayana because he takes all of my troubles away. He, he sits on the fastest bird, Garuda. His blue body is sugaring um, like, like the blue sapphire mountain. He, he is holding the divine discus Sudarshana. He, his eyes looks like blooming, blooming petals of a Ananya. My name is Ananya Pitru Devo Bhava. According to the Vedas, Pitru Devo Bhava means we have to treat our father as, as God. Our father is our very wisher. He wants us to be best in like 
education and behavior all the things you do today i'll be telling a story about a son who respects his father once upon a time there was a king called yayati son of king nakusha and priyavardhana he had two wives named sharmishta and devayani had five sons named yadu tuvasu dulyu anidruyu and puru as yayati was getting older he requested his sons to take his old age they in return they have to gain their youth but his first four sons refused and were cursed but his last son puru loved his father and was also clever so he quickly agreed to yayati after many years yayati realized the truth and crowned puru as the king and went to the forest to do penance so what do we know we should respect our father we if we respect our father we can get best things in life jaisman narayana am barg of age 10 in in module 2 i'll be reciting a shloka from krishnashtakam रुक्मणी केलिशम युक्त पीतांबरशोभित अवाप्त तुसी गंधम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु इट मीन्स ऐ प्रे टु द लॉर्ड कृष्ण द यूनिवर्सल गुरु हु प्लेज विद हिज वाइफ रुक्मणी देवी एंड वेर्स सिल्क येलो गार्मेंट्स एंड इज फिल्ड विद अरोम ऑफ तुलसी जय श्री मन नारायण अम बार्ग ऑफ एज टेन इन मॉड्यूल टू एंड आई बी रिसाइडिंग अ स्टोरी फ्रॉम माई स्टोरी टेक्सट बुक कॉल्ड मदर्स ग्रेस श्री रामा वॉज वन ऑफ द फोर सन्स ऑफ किंग दशरथा ही गॉ प्लसिंग्स फ्रॉम हिज मदर बिफोर ही गॉ ही गॉरिनेटेड एज किंग He got exiled to the forest from his stepmother Kaikeyi. He he spent most of his time with Kaikeyi in the kingdom, and didn't have any hard feelings on Kaikeyi when he was exiled. He he kept loving Kaikeyi the same amount as he did before she got he got exiled. That's just one example of Mater Deva Bhava, because Rama was treating Kaikeyi goodly like a god. even though she put him in a bad situation in as an exiled in the forest jai shri man narayana my name is aniruddha badrina i am 7 years old i am in module 2 cupertino pranya center i am going to recite panchayi the stotram स्फुटसहस्रारिशिखातिथिम सुदर्शन भास्कर कोल्यम सुदृशा प्राण विनाशि विष्णो चक्रम सदाह शरण प्रपत्ये आई सरेंदर टू सुदर्शन चक्र हेल्प बाय महाविष्णु सुदर्शन चक्र इज लूमिनस एंड ब्राइटर देन मिलियंस ऑफ सन्स ही डिस्ट्रॉइज enemies of devas jai shri manarayana shri manarayana my name is aniruddha badrinath i am 7 years old i am in module 2 cupertino pranya center devotion to father has been shown by many in particular i am going to talk about nachiketa son of udalaka said In a rage, Udalaka offered Nachiketa to Yama. Nachiketa was patient and obeyed his father. Nachiketa asked three boons from Yama. His father's well-being. His father should not be angry with him anymore. And Brahma and Atmanyanam. Thus, Nachiketa. Kaita became a role model for Pitru Bhakti, Pitru Devo Bhava. Jai Shri Man Narayana. Jai Shri Man Narayana. My name is Ban. I am in Madhya Pradesh, Pragya Kupertina. I will be chanting the the shloka number three in Hari Ashtakam. Pratyam yani sitani punyam yatanani cha tani sadvani seshani harid ityakshadatvayam. Meaning. The one who chants the two-letter word Hari will get the same benefits as visiting the temples and bathing in the sacred rivers on this earth. 
This explains the pro and the importance of Hari Nama. My name is Viba and I am in Module 2 in Pragya Cupertino. I am going to narrate the story of Prahalada and how it connects to Pitro Deva Baba. In this story, Prahalada was a little boy who was a great devotee of Lord Vishnu, but his father Hiranyakashipu did not like that. He tried to kill Prahalada many times, but every time Lord, Lord Vishnu saved Prahalada. In the end, Lord Vishnu took a form of Lord Narasimha to kill Hiranyakashipu. Even after Hiranyakashipu was killed, Prahalada had prayed to Lord Narasimha to forgive his father's bad deeds. This shows Prahalada's devotion to his father. This is how the story of Prahalada connects to Pitro Deva Baba. Thank you, Module 2 kids. That was a wonderful performance. Listening to the beautiful stories will surely instill devotion and bhakti towards parents. Mater Devo Baba, Pitr Devo Baba. Oh, did I mention that we learned yoga, meditation, and bhajan here at Pranya? Our model three kids, Adrat Badam, Jayabira Reddy, Lakshmi Sridharan, Shriya Chincholi, will share some of these in addition to Hai Viva Sota. My name is Adrat and I'm from Cooper Chino Model 3. I will be doing yoga and meditation. First, I will be doing meditation. For meditation, you leave your mind blank and concentrate on your breathing. Soon, you'll be able to concentrate on every single body part. Then, you, you will be able to hear your heartbeat. After, the, after you're done with this, uh, you will be better at what to do next. Your mind will be calmer and your memory power will increase. Next, I will be, be talking about Kropos. In Sanskrit, it is known as Kakasana. Kropos helps you with arm balancing, arm strength. It tones your core and it also helps you in harder poses like handstand and firefly. I recommend doing it. The next pose I'm going to talk is headstand. In Sanskrit, it is known as Shirsasana. This pose helps your brain get stronger and it helps with mind circulation. It also gives you a lot of balance and stability. I recommend doing this. Lastly, we went over three poses. One helps with calming your mind. Another helps with arm balance. And the last one helps helps with blood circulation in your head. My name is Jayadira from Pregna Cupertino Center. Today I'm going to tell you a sloka from Hayagrivam Sotam called Dakshinya Ramya. Dakshinya Ramya Girishasha Murtihi Devi Sarojana Dharma Patni Vyasa Dayopi Vyapa Desya Vachaha Puranti Sarveta Saktile Saihi All sages and de devatas bestow and continue do to bestow knowledge on human beings. The attractive form of Shiva is called Dakshinya Murtihi, capable of imparting knowledge, dwells in a part of your divine form. Ramha was born in a lotus from your navel. His divine consort Vaga Devi, also called Saraswati, is another devata to grant knowledge. The great sage Veda Vyasa divided the holy Vedas, wrote 18 great Puranas and author the Brahma Sutras. All of these have become great due to an iota to your infinite grace alone. alone. Lord Hayagriva, I humbly pray to you to move me similarly. Jai Shri Man Narayana. Narayana. My name is Lakshmi and I am in Morial 3 Cupertino Pregnia Center. Today I will be chanting the eighth sloka of Hi the eighth sloka of Hayagriva Stotram. Mando Vagishyam Nyatam Virincho Vacham Nidevanchita Bhagadeya 
दैत्य पानीतांदयेगबूयोपी अध्या पयिश्यो निगमान चेत्वं Now I'll be saying the meanings of this slokam. Sriman Narayana created Brahma and blessed him and given Vedas to him. Through Vedas he further continued the Jagat Srishti. This is exactly what Shastra says. Like why Swami Deskan describes in the sloka as O oh Lord Hayagriva, if you were not incarnated or not destroyed the Matukatipas or if you have not restorated the Vedas or if you have not given the Vedas to Brahma, he would have been dull witted. Further, he couldn't have continued Jagad Srishti. Nigaman is Vedas. Adhyapa Vishyaha, that is Devarir, did the Adhyapagam, that is taught Vedas to Brahma. Viranchaha is Brahma. Vacham Nide is O Lord Hayagriva, the treasure house of knowledge. If you wouldn't have restored the Vedas with your Daye and once again did the Adhyapagam to Brahma, that has given Vedas to him as he lost the Bhagyam of Jagat Srishti by chanting the Vedas, he would have become Mando Bhavishyam, Mando Bhavishyam Nyatam. For sure, he would have been dull witted and lost his Viveka Jnanam. This is what Swami Deskan is describing in this sloka. Kavita Arkika Simhaya Kalyana Guna Shalini Shrimate Venkateshaya Vedanta Gura Veda Maha Jai Shriman Narayana Jai Shriman Narayana I am Shriya from Ayat Sri Kupertino Today I will be singing a bhajan Shri Nivasa Govinda Shri Venkatesha Govinda Bhakta Bhattava Govinda Bhagavata Priya Govinda Nitya Nirmala Govinda Nirmika Shama Govinda Purana Purusha Govinda Kundari Kaksha Govinda Govinda Hari Govinda Kukumarandana Govinda Govinda Hari Govinda Venkatana Govinda Nanda Nandana Govinda Navanika Chola Wow, great job, Mario Three Kids! And also thank you, Adya, for those marvelous introductions. The performance was beautiful. My name is Veda Gita Krishnan, and this is my seventh year at Pranya. I am in the Life Management in Gita, or LMIG for short, program. My experience at Pranya has been extraordinary. Whenever I walk into class, I feel like I'm part of a big family there. I've made numerous friends, learned valuable lessons, and listened to enchanting stories and morals read by my teachers. I've consistently applied the lessons I've learned and realized the relevance and importance of scriptures and ancient wisdom, such as what I've learned from Vishnu Sasranamam and Bhagavad Gita. It's inspiring that even through the COVID pandemic, the students presented were still be able to participate in this traditional annual event. Now, without further ado, let's move on for the next presentations. 
we have Module 4 Kids, Anantarun, Ridhima Vutukuru, and Avyak Sudarshan learning Vishnu Sasranamam and are presenting shlokas, namama, and story, and associated with it, an explanation of a Divya Desham temple. Let's watch it now! My name is Avyak. I'm in Module 4 at the Cupertino Pragya Center. Today I'm going to be saying the first five slokas of the Vishnu Sasanama. Shuklam Baradaram Vishnum Shashi Vandam Chaturpujam Prasannavadanam Dhyaye Sarva Vigno Vashante Yesya Dureda Vakratya Parishadya Parashadam Vignam Nignanti Shakadam Vishwaksenam Tamashre Vyasam Vashishta Naptaram Shakti Pautramakal Masham Parasaratma Jamande Shukadatam Taponidim Vyasa Yavishnu Rupaya Vyasa Rupaya Vishnu Me Namo Vai Brahma Nadi Vashishtaya Namo Namaha Avikaraya Shuddhaya Nityaya Paramatmane Sadeka Rupa Rupaya Vishnu Me Prabha Vishnu Me Jai Shri Manna Jai Shri My name is Rima. I am in third grade Pranya Madhya for Cooper Tino Center Shloka 17 Vishnu Sasana Upendro Vamana Pramshu Amoga Shuchi Rujitaha Atindra Sangrahas Sargo Drutatma Niyamo Yamaha Vamana Avatar Pali, the grandson of Prahlada, was holding a yajna to conquer the devas. Then, all of a sudden, a golden chariot and weapons rose out of the Yajna fire. Bali and his Asura army set off to heaven. Indra got scared and ran to Brihaspati. The Deva were conquered by the Asuras. Meena Aditi prayed for her lord. My lord, my sons have lost their kingdom and all our glory along with it. Her husband said, I cannot save our sons, but I know who can. You should pray to Vishnu. On the thirteenth day of her vow, Vishnu appeared. Aditi asked for him to save her sons, so Vishnu took the form of Vamana. He went to Bali's Yajna and Bali took him in generously. He asked, Vamana, he asked Vamana, what do you want? Vamana asked for three feet of land. Bali asked, are you sure that is all you want? Vamana said yes. Then, all of a sudden, he grew bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. He put his foot on the heavens, his second foot on the earth, but he had nowhere to put his third foot. Bali said, Oh Lord, put it on my head. That is what I value the most. Ramana was about to put his foot on Bali's head, but Rallada came running out of the castle and stopped him and said, That is my grandson. Ramana said he kept his vow even in difficulties, though he will come to heaven. Hi, my name is Anand and I'm from Cupertino Module 4. I will be giving a presentation on Sri Rangam Temple. History. It was for, the temple was first built by Dharma Varma Chola when he found the idol. The idol was gifted by Lord Rama to Vibhishna, who was tricked by Lord Ganesha into placing it where the temple is today. The idol couldn't be moved. The temple was destroyed by a flood and was rebuilt by the Chola king, Kilivalavan. It was built in the Vijayanagara period, 1336-1565. Vedanta Desikar lived in the Srirangam temple for 14 years. Ilanta Desika had to move to Satyagalam in Karnataka at the time of the Muslim invasion. Main deity. The main deity is Sri Ranganatha along with Goddess Lakshmi, who is worshipped as Ranganayaki in this temple. The Lord is in a lying down position on Adi Shesha, as is, as is seen in the picture. His other two consorts, Budevi and Hila Devi, are also seen next to him. Facts. This temple is also known as Tirvaranga Tirupati. It is the first among the 108 Vipya Desan temples. It is located in Tiruchirapalli. There are 81 shrines which are dedicated to Lord Vishnu and his various avatars, also to Goddess Lakshmi and various scholars and poets. There is a shrine for Rama Anuja Acharya, the last 
um, picture on the slide. Uh, there are 17 major gopurams uh, right next to the picture of Rama and Isha Achaki. You can see Vellai Gopuram. It has a 1,000 pillared hall, which is uh, on the top picture. Uh, it is the world's largest functioning Hindu temple, which is quite amazing. And many festivals are performed here. It's quite an interesting temple, and I definitely had a lot of fun uh, researching about it and learning about it. Thank you for this. Thank you, Module 4 Kids, and applause for an elegant performance. Let's now move on to the Life Management and Gita presentations. We have Vardhan Kalkunte, Adya Bardinath, Vaishnavi Sista, Anaga Balaji, Mahi Sumanth, Sri Krishna Kataru, Vibhav Chancholi, Vibhish Chakravarti, and I, Veda Gita Krishnan, sharing with us the valuable and much relevant lessons we have learned from Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, Lessons 1, 2, and 3, created by Varadhan, Veda, and Adya. Chapter 1 Justification of the name Arjuna Vishada Yoga Arjuna didn't want to fight his kin. He felt as if killing another human being because of resources or want of things was wrong. He wanted to renounce arms and go back to the forest. But he spoke to Krishna, who was a good source of advice and who helped him get out of Vishada. Life is unfair, but you have to get past that and see it for what it is. When you think that life is unfair, you are experiencing vishada. Vishada means sorrow, and the best thing to do when you're feeling sorrowful is to get out of it by finding people to rely on and taking their advice. Remember, when you're at your lowest point, you have the potential to rise to the highest you will ever be. This ties into the statement, when you're at rock bottom, there's nowhere to go but up. But the only way you can do that is to find people to rely on and take their advice as well as finding your own path to what will seem to be the best you will ever be. Know yourself. Bhagavad Gita can teach us many life lessons, but I believe that learning to know yourself is the best lesson of all. We are unique, no doubt about that. We all have goals, weaknesses, opportunities and threats but in this day and age what hurts the most of all is that people let ambition rage and overconfidence take lead and we take our blessings for granted we should never play the blame game and be content with what we have we are all different and unique and that is a beautiful thing this is just one of the amazing lessons i've learned from bhagavad gita moving on to adya's beautiful slide discipline always lesson three Discipline is a very important part of our life, and we find it pretty much everywhere. We find it here, and here, and here also. These three photos all show one type of discipline, that is team discipline. And the first one shows birds flying in a V, and the team discipline there is that birds are all flying together, synchronized, coordinated, and that way they can fly to new hunting grounds or wherever they want to go. The planets all work together so that none of them get sucked in by the sun. They all balance each other out with their for gravitational forces and, well, we're happy now. And the wolf, they work together to get prey. If one of them decides to not listen to the leader, they can accidentally startle the animal and lose the entire pack of meat. Here are some other types of discipline that humans make. One, physical discipline. It's how much and what do you eat? How do you work? And how do you move? Two, Mental discipline, how do you talk and how do you act? This relates to the mind. And uh, one example of this is that, let's say you're doing your homework and you want to go play video games. Do you or do you not? If you don't, well, that's showing mental discipline. Three, emotional discipline, channelizing emotion. This works when, let's say, you failed a test. And not showing this discipline would include ripping the test up and trying to, well, hide it. But showing this discipline shows that you'll study harder for the next test and own up that you didn't probably study. Or team discipline. This is working with team and enlisting the acting. That's what the birds, the planets, and wolves show us stated before. And five, cosmic discipline. And this is probably the most important discipline and it sort of encompasses all other disciplines into one. This is how your words, your thoughts, and your actions will work together in harmony to give everybody around you and yourself peace and joy. 
Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you had a good time. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Jai Shri Manarayana. My name is Viva. Jai Shri Manarayana. My name is Sri Krishna. Jai Shri Manarayana. My name is Vipish. Today we will be talking about lessons 4 through 6. Okay, next slide. Lesson 4, Cosmos in a Cup. Some real-life examples of cosmos in a cup are in space. A comet accelerates five times faster than before the sun. And also, on Earth, students excel with the imparted knowledge from their guru. The link between them are the comet equals the student and the sun equals the guru. Another example is in the air. When the sun rays reach a fall- falling rain droplet, each droplet illuminates into a rainbow. On land, when a true disciple is under the guidance of their guru, they reflect the go- glory of their guru. The relationship here is that the water droplet equals a true disciple, the sun ray equals the guru, and the rainbow equals the glory of their guru. The moral of this lesson is that you should always take the advice your guru gave you and use it when any problems or obstructions appear in the future. Some things that I learned are that your guru gives you the advice for your own good and you should never ignore it. Hello. Next I will be presenting lesson 5, Shruti Kesha. So, who is Shruti Kesha? Shruti Kesha is Krishna, the sense controller of all beings, who has command over the emotions of you, I, and everyone around us. He is even greater than Guda Kesha or Arjuna, who can control sleep. The influence of Shruti Kesha is felt everywhere, and it was he who made Arjuna regret taking up arms against his gurus. Shruti Kesha indirectly and directly affects all of us and can help boost morale as well as ground us and bring us back to earth. The question we must all consider is can we all be Shruti Kesha? Lesson 6 at the crossroad. That is a very good question, Vibho. We must first find out how to deal with some difficult situations. Some things I learn are to stay calm, take a deep breath, enjoy refreshment, spend time with nature, analyze the problem and delve into the problem at hand. The moral of this uh, lesson is when you are faced with crossroads or problems, choose what is right for yourself and what is wise for yourself. Some real life examples of crossroads is when you are to choose a path choose wisely and what feels right for you jishu shimana thank you for listening you for to our listening. slideshow jay sri manana my name is vaishnavi and i'm in 7th grade i'm going to be talking about the lesson search where you lost search where you lost what triggers a feeling of despondency The delusion of mine triggers the feeling of sorrow and despondency. The delusion of mine is when you think you are theirs and they think they are yours. The delusion of mine is shown in Dhritarashtra and Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. How to get out of the feeling of despondency? The wise one said, "The ignorant can be guided, but the ignorant who thinks he is omniscient can never be guided." Even when you are feeling agitated and angry, find a good mentor, not just a mentor who supports you. Sorrow and despondency can get out of control. You need to find a trustworthy mentor, not just a mentor who supports every decision you make. It is not good to lash out at your mentor, even though you are angry. Arjuna was in Vishada when he realized he had to battle his kith and kin. He he went to a trustworthy mentor who was Krishna and surrendered to him. Soon Arjuna got out of the state of Vishada. Jai Shri Manarayana. My name is Anika Balaji. I am ten years old and in fifth grade. I shall be explaining this lesson surrender to the savior from sorrow. Q 
Key points. This lesson, Surrender to the Savior from Sorrow, is about how Arjuna is very sad to fight against the Kodavas. Arjuna explained this to Krishna and asked hopelessly for help. Now let us answer this question. What is Vishadha and what does it lead to? Vishadha is sadness and sorrow. Cowardice is the result of sadness and self-pity. Arjuna has been physically and mentally confused and sorrowful. This condition is so pitiable that Krishna refers to it as klebya, helpless, chudram hridaya darbalyam, a weakness in the heart. From this, from this story, we learn that this condition had a result in Arjuna's attitude of cowardice and vishadha. Refers in the story that it is like kasmala dust over a mirror. Key points: Arjuna was being cowardly as he would first refuse to fight. He was to fight his grandsire, teacher, cousins, and many more. He told his story to Krishna, whose explanation and slash advice was universal. Arjuna took the advice and turned out victorious, but the arrogant Duryodhana decided not to take advice from his elders and commanded them instead when you have the chance and sadly face defeat. What I learned, it is up to us who we want to be. We can be an Arjuna or a Duryodhana. It is also up to us whose qualities we want to learn from. If you take a good and trustworthy, if you take good and trustworthy advice, you will turn out like Arjuna. But if you, but if you are arrogant, you will turn out like Duryodhana. Hi, Jay Shimanarayana. My name is Mahi Sumant and I am in first grade. I am seven years old. The lesson I am going to do today is the Don't Be Oppressed by Obsessions, Chapter 9. Key point. Who am I? I am Atman, the great Pranashakti. This body I have is not mine. Whose is it? It is nobody's. The Atma takes up the form of a body, body and comes to earth. Arjuna asked Krishna how he could possibly kill the Kaurava since they are our dear ones. Krishna told Arjuna he can kill them because the body goes, but the Atma is always there. The Atma is so small, it can't be destroyed. Key points. What is death? Death is when the Atma leaves the body the body with the prana shakti. What is shoka and anushoka? Shoka means when something happens and you get sad, but you move on and be happy. But anushoka means you always be sad and never be happy. Body is gatasu because it cannot be living without the atma. Without the atma, the body becomes non-living. Atma is a gatasu because it has its own prana shakti. Thank you. Jai Shivanarayana. Jai Shimanaraina. Thank you so much, Swamiji, for giving us this opportunity to learn learn important life concepts. Thank you all for the elaborate and beautiful presentations. Students coming together presenting these from their respective homes seamlessly was made possible by the blessings of our Acharya. To end it on a sweet note, we have two performances of yet another enchanting Tamari song, Marda Mekum Kanne. Little Krishna, played by Varad Madhubushi, and Puneet Ramanuja Rapolu, and Nishoda, played by Ananya Madhubushi, and Piyusha Varshini Rapolu. Thank you all for watching. Jai Shri
நான் சொன்னேன் மாடு மேய்க்கும் கண்ணே நீ போக வேண்டாம் 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 சொன்னேன் பால் தர கக்கண்டு சீனி தர கட்சின பால் தர கக்கண்டு சீனி தர கை நிறைய வெண்ண தர வெயிலே போக வேண்டாம் மாடு மேக்கும் கண்ணே நீ போக வேண்டாம் சொன்னேன் மாடு மேக்கும் கண்ணே நீ போக வேண்டாம் சொன்னேன் கட்சின பால் வேண்டாம் கல்கண்டு சீனி வேண்டாம் உல்லாசமாய் மாடு மேய்த்து ஒரு நொடியில் திரும்பிடுவேன் உல்லாசமாய் மாடு மேய்த்து ஒரு நொடியில் திரும்பிடுவேன் கட்சின பால் வேண்டாம் கல்கண்டு சீனி வேண்டாம் உல்லாசமாய் மாடு மேய்த்து ஒரு நொடியில் திரும்பிடுவேன் போக வேண்டும் தாயே தடை சொல்லாத நீயே போக வேண்டும் தாயே தடை சொல்லாத நீயே யமுனா நதி கரையில் எப்பொழுதும் கழ்வர் பயம் யமுனா நதி கரையில் எப்பொழுதும் கழ்வர் பயம் கழ்வர் வந்து உனை அடித்தால் கலங்கிடுவாய் கண்மணியே அடு மேய்க்கும் கண்ணே நீ போக கழ்வனுக்கோ கள்ளருண்டோ கண்டதுண்டோ சொல்லும் அம்மா கழ்வர் வந்து என அடித்தால் கண்ட துண்டம் செய்திடுவேன் கழ்வர் வந்து என அடித்தால் கண்ட துண்டம் செய்திடுவேன் போக வேண்டும் தாயே தடை சொல்லாத நீயே கோவர்தனகிரியில் கோரமான மிருகம் உண்டு கோவர்தனகிரியில் கோரமான மிருகம் உண்டு கரடி புலிகள் கண்டால் கலங்கிடுவாய் கண்மணியே கரடி கலங்கிடுவாய் கண்மணியே கோவர்தனகிரியில் கோரமான மிருகம் உண்டு கரடி புலிகள் கண்டால் கலங்கிடுவாய் கண்மணியே மாடு மேய்க்கும் கண்ணே நீ போக வேண்டாம் சொன்னே காட்டு மிருகங்கள் எல்லாம் எனை கண்டால் ஓடி காட்டு மிருகங்கள் எல்லாம் என்னை கண்டால் ஓடி வரும் கூட்டம் கூட்டமாக வந்தால் வேட்டையாடி ஜெயித்திடுவேன் கூட்டம் கூட்டமாக வந்தால் வேட்டையாடி ஜெயித்திடுவேன் காட்டு மிருகங்கள் எல்லாம் என்னை கண்டால் ஓடி வரும் கூட்டம் கூட்டமாக வந்தால் வேட்டையாடி ஜெயித்திடுவேன் போக வேண்டும் தாயே தடை சொல்லாத நீயே போக வேண்டும் தடை சொல்லாத நீயே பட்சம் உள்ள நந்த கோபர் பாலம் எங்கே என்று கேட்டால் பட்சம் உள்ள நந்த கோபர் பாலம் எங்கே என்று கேட்டால் என்ன பதில் சொல்வேன் அடா என்னுடைய கண்மணியே என்ன பதில் சொல்வேன் அடா பலரோடு வீதியிலே வந்தாடுறான் என்று சொல்லு பலரோடு வீதியிலே வந்தாடுறான் என்று சொல்லு தேடிய நீ வருகையிலே ஓடி வந்து நின்றுடுவேன் தேடிய நீ வருகையிலே ஓடி வந்து நின்றுடுவேன் பலரோடு வீதியிலே வந்தாடுறான் என்று சொல்லு தேடிய நீ வருகையிலே ஓடி வந்து நின்றுடுவேன் போக வேண்டும் தாயே தடை சொல்லாத நீயே 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 தடை சொல்லாத நீயே 
My name is Priya Batri. I'm a parent and teacher in Cupertino Prenya Center. I'm glad to be part of Prenya family, where my kids not only learn shlokas, but also stories from various Upanishads and Puranas, which make them understand our traditions, uh, customs, and dharma. Most importantly, our Sanatana dharma. The program as a whole made me get more involved in various aspects of it. Uh, also, it has given me the opportunity to be part of a big, big satsang and um, to stay in touch with the Bhagavatas. I am so grateful that this was not impeded by COVID situation. This noble uh, service continued amongst all the chaos that we went through this past year. I pray to the Almighty and our Acharya for this divine service to continue and grow in the coming years to come. Jai Shri Manarayana.